Check this out, we just finished this beautiful countertop. When you guys are doing epoxy projects, you want those surfaces to lay out glass smooth, but that's not always the case. So we're gonna show you how to create a glass smooth finish every single time. And what we did on this project is we induced a bunch of air into the epoxy during the mixing process, and you're gonna have to stay to the end to see how we eliminate all these bubbles and how simple it is when you're using Ligari products to get a glass smooth finish every single time. What's up YouTube, Tyler with Ligari Products. Today, I'm gonna induce so much air into this epoxy and I'm still gonna get it to lay out glass smooth and we're gonna show you that trick at the end of this video. So stay tuned. 3P2, 3P2. It's mixing time guys and I realize uh, this can be intimidating to some of you but I'm gonna show you the easiest process um, to make this simple for you. It's called 3P2. We came up with this process. It doesn't matter how long you mix it, how fast you mix it, as long as you do this process. Mm -hmm. So we're basically gonna mix all the resin into one bucket, and then we're gonna dump that into another bucket and mix it again a little bit. And, and, and I'll go over the process as we're going, but we call 3P2. So we go up and down three times in one bucket. The P stands for pour into the secondary mixing container. And then we go up and down two more times, and that's basically how you mix this. Now you'll never have a soft spot, never have an issue with your resin setting up as long as you follow um, this procedure. So we're gonna jump right into it. What I'm gonna be using for this three gallon kit of epoxy, two five gallon buckets. We have three, actually we only need two of these, but it is always good to have extra supplies. You can always take them back. We need two five and a half or five quart containers, and then we're gonna need six two and a half quart containers. That's gonna be for our dirty pour batches. Five gallon stir stick, a couple one gallon ones. You're gonna want gloves, and then a drill, a mixing paddle, and then a, just a simple drinking cup. We use these to get the spray paint colors out. That way we can add other colors into the resin. And then the product. We got our three gallon kit of metallic epoxy, and then we got two of our epoxy pigments. And then if you guys are wanting to speed up the uh, cure time of your epoxy, you can add our epoxy accelerator right to the mix. Now I will say this is for experienced installers. It does cut down your working time. It cuts down the pot life, how long they'll sit in a bucket. So make sure you know what you're doing before you add this stuff. Now we're gonna add our part B. So once we add the part B, this is gonna start the clock as far as uh, pot life, how much time we have before it starts to set up. So I'm gonna get this dumped in and then we're gonna start rocking. This is gonna be a little bit more fluid so it will drain out a lot faster. So a lot of companies uh, have different ways of mixing. I know a lot of people say you never wanna have your paddle wheel um, out of the epoxy at all because that induces a bunch of air into the resin and that's a big no-no in the industry. Well, our resin is different. So what I'm gonna do is show you that we're gonna induce as much air into this epoxy as we can, and then we're gonna show you how to eliminate um, any air bubbles and still get the resin to lay out glass smooth. So again, very, very easy to mix our products. You don't have to be uh, careful like a lot of other products. We can do pretty much mix it however we want as far as inducing air into it. Um, obviously, you wanna follow our 3P2 method, but again, I'm just gonna kinda mix this wild and crazy, get a bunch of air induced into it, and then I'm gonna go through the 3P2 mixing process, and then we're gonna just do it like we typically would, and you guys are gonna see how glass smooth this still lays out. So check it out, guys. I got a lot of air in here. It's almost turning like a white. Um, I'm gonna keep going for a little bit more, just get as much air induced right into this resin as we can. All right, so we're gonna show you what you can expect with the premium product here. So now I'm gonna go through our 3P2 mixing process just to ensure that I mix it correctly, but I, I would assume we got a lot of air into this uh, bucket here. 
Um, so we're gonna get right into the 3P2 process. All right, so now we know we have a perfectly mixed, mixed batch of resin. Uh, following that 3P2 process is gonna ensure you have no soft spots. Every part of that resin is gonna set up. I can go dump this out, dump the bucket upside down, let every single part of that resin drain out and it's still gonna set up. So now the next step is to separate this into two gallon and a half batches. You can measure it. I like to just dump it out into another five gallon bucket and eyeball the heights, get as close as we can and then we're gonna add our one and a half gallon epoxy pigments. And if you wanna be real clean, you can wipe these with gloves, but I'm gonna wind up making a mess anyway. So now I got equal parts, and I'm pretty sure you could weigh these and they'd be exact. That's how confident in this I am. So now we're gonna add our burnt caramel and soft tan. Burnt caramel and soft tan. Um, if you guys get these pigments during winter, sometimes they will thicken up on you. So just check them. You can put them in some warm water. They'll soften right up. So we're gonna dump these. Again, this is for a gallon and a half, which we have here. We have a three gallon kit split into two. Get all this stuff out. Caramel or caramel? Caramel or caramel? Let us know what you guys, how you guys pronounce that. A little tip for you on mixing colors. If you start with the lightest color first and then work your way to the darkest colors, we can use the same paddle. We don't have to change the paddle wheel. All right, so what we're gonna do, I'll have Kyle jump in here. He can start getting our spray paints ready. Um, again, try to map your guys' projects out to where you're not having resin in the bucket just waiting, right? We do this a lot. We know how much time we have with it, but it will be nice to once I'm done mixing, we're starting to batch out our resin. Kyle's gonna use, we're gonna be using a charcoal gray and just black spray paint um, with these two colors. I think it's gonna turn out really, really cool. So he's just gonna take this, shake it up, spray it into the cups. Give me some of that liquid spray paint, and then we're gonna be putting that on top of all of our dirty pour batches that we pour out. Maybe you love these colors, but maybe you wanted to add, say, white spray paint. All you have to do is go buy some white spray paint, and you can add it to this. So you don't have to use these exact colors. Again, you have a lot of options with the spray paints. Simple way to add accent colors into your pores. So next step, got everything mixed. He's got our stuff ready, um, our spray paint ready. Now we're gonna batch up our pores. So I'll give you, a, I'll kind of explain how this works. If you guys are looking for more dominant spray paint colors, you wanna pour that into the top of your containers right before you dump it out on the counter. If you want to say maybe blend a little bit into the soft tan, you would dump it in the bucket first or halfway and then add more soft tan. So we'll kind of do it both ways just so we can get some colors um, throughout these counters. So I'm going to add, we'll just do two with a little black. And then we'll do two with a little bit of this charcoal in the bottom first. And then the rest 
we're gonna be adding these to the top. Check out these colors, guys. So this is gonna be on the website. This will be under Stone Kit and will be number 29. And these are the colors that we're gonna be putting down. We will be adding a lot more black to the tops um, and probably some more of the charcoal color to the tops as we're pouring out. Cool thing about these kits is you can add more color or you can add less. That's totally up to you. Another option, guys, is our custom kits. You can make custom kits on our website as well. Uh, pick your own colors, mix and match. Um, a lot of options there too. So if you don't find the exact kit you want, try out our custom kit options as well. So before we start dumping the buckets out, um, I'm gonna go over what we did as far as uh, to get to this point. Obviously we primed the counters. Uh, we put weather stripping on the edges that creates the dam eliminates the resin from flowing over until it starts to set up. The reason we do a lot of weather stripping here is because we do so many coats on these counters. The edges start to really taper off. And if we do painter's tape, it just builds up too much and wants to flow over the top. And so we start using weather stripping. Now, obviously, if you guys are doing your counters for your first time, you're never gonna have that issue because they're gonna be flat. We probably coat these tops, you know, a couple times a week. And so we get really tapered edges. And so we try to minimize that by doing the weather stripping. So weather stripping is down, always make sure it's pressed down good. If you're doing the painter's tape, we do two rows of painter's tape. And again, you wanna press that down really well. The biggest thing if you're doing taping your edges is you gotta make sure your faces are clean, especially after you sand or bondo. Really clean your faces really well, right? Denatured alcohol, a rag, clean these faces, clean the bottom. That way the tape sticks good, the primer sticks good like it should, and it won't pull off with the tape. So like I said, we're gonna add a lot of spray paint to these pores. So let's get started with that. We're gonna let Kyle do his magic here. He's really good at making cool batches. <laughs> exactly, check it out. He missed, you literally missed pouring it in there by like an inch. This stuff happens. Been hitting the gym too much, guys. I'm sorry. Okay, here, dump some black in. Okay, he's fired. Get out, get out of here. And this is why we plastic off the whole section you're coating. You never know what's gonna happen. Okay, so we're gonna start with this guy since he poured some spray paint in it. While he's cleaning that up, he's got a lot of spray paint in there. So I'm gonna swish that around a little bit. So what'll happen is if you dump a bunch of spray paint in the top, when you go to pour that out, you're just gonna have pure spray paint, which can look cool, but if you don't want that much color, you need to kind of blend that in just a little bit, give it a little bit of a shake, and then you won't get as much of that coming out. So we're gonna move quick here since we got quite a bit on it. Then we're gonna jump around because we're gonna want this color all throughout the tops.
Hey, Brian, why don't you hop in here and finish it out? Sure. Grab some gloves. All right, guys. For real, finish you her out, dude. Joking. I'm not joking. Hop in here and finish her out. Brian, local contractor oh, here. No. In a, oh, no. in, here, close up. Hey, come here. Hey, come here. Get a close up on the shirt. Innovate coatings. He does travel. He's gone all the way to South Carolina from Washington State. I'm thinking we need to see how much black we got out here. Super cool. We need a little bit throughout here. So I'm getting ready to show you guys how to create a glass smooth finish on your epoxy every single time. But before we get into that, I wanna talk about cost effectiveness of our countertop kits. Typically, uh, granite countertops, you're anywhere from uh, low end, 20, 25, $30 a square foot, upwards of 80 to 100 a square foot, depending on what you pick. Now our countertop kits come out to about $13 uh, dollars a square foot for the Ferrari of the kits, right? That includes primer, epoxy, colors and our durable urethane top coat which again guys a lot of companies don't even offer a lot of the stuff that comes in our kit so very very cost effective way to enhance any existing surface that you guys might have so before we <laughs> finish this thing out i want to know what color of spray paint you guys would add to this top right here we got two browns we got well we got like a soft tan that almost looks so this is our soft tan it kind of looks white when you have darker colors um, and then we have our burnt caramel or caramel, however you pronounce it. And then we have the black spray paint and the charcoal spray paint. So I'm just curious if you guys had to add a color of spray paint to this top to give it that pop or that wow factor, what color would that be? Uh, comment below, let us know. All right guys, so this is it. This is how we get that glass smooth finish every single time when you're using Ligari products. Now remember, all products aren't the same, um, so don't assume all our techniques and stuff that we do on our products are gonna work on yours. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. So again, this is mainly for when you use our products. So the big trick, guys, is very simple, denatured alcohol. We miss the surface with denatured alcohol. That fizzes that surface, that eliminates the bubbles, any micro bubbles that are in the resin, that allows them to pop. There is obviously custom certain additives that we have in our mix that are proprietary that help the bubbles rise and release. But the big trick, guys, is just simply denatured alcohol. Um, and so what we do is we miss the surface. You want to stay away from flooding the surface. If we flood the surface too much, a lot of these veins and colors will get kind of muddied out <clears throat> and kind of blend and like move. So we do not want to um, flood the surface. We want to mist it. And you can do that a couple times. You just want to let that evaporate for about five minutes and then go ahead and mist it again. But I'm going to show you just simply hitting it one time with denatured alcohol. Okay, what I'm gonna demonstrate here, guys, is misting the surface, like I was saying, and then on the other side of this board, I'm gonna flood it. And again, you do not wanna flood the surface, that'll muddy out your colors. Best way to show you guys is on a hard epoxy surface already, so you can kinda see what that looks like. So, misting is gonna happen here, and I'm gonna show you that. Right, that's a fine mist. Just hit the surface real quick. That eliminates those bubbles, and this is what you don't wanna do. You don't wanna just sit there and flood the surface. So you can see how much liquid we have out there. That's gonna sit there and just muddy out those colors and all those fracture veins that you have. And keep in mind guys, I will reiterate that when we mix, we did this on purpose. We added a lot of air into the mix. So we have a lot of foam and air that you typically wouldn't get. We did that on purpose to kind of show you how user-friendly our products are. So here we go, we're gonna miss this guy right here. See how they're just fizzing and popping? Super, super cool. So now I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that on the whole surface. And again, if we need to hit it again, we just let that evaporate for about five minutes. And notice, misting it doesn't create the cells like the isopropyl does. Biggest thing is do not flood the surface. You're better off hitting it two or three times light than getting too much out there. Uh, we had a, someone ask on comments on a recent video if they could torch 
after doing isopropyl or denatured. Um, obviously, if you're using our products, you don't have to torch, but I would never torch a chemical that's on a countertop. You run the chance of it catching on fire, right? If we have a bunch of flammable uh, chemical on a countertop, like we just sprayed this and then we go to torch it, sometimes that will catch on fire. Um, that's the last thing you guys want to do inside a house. So uh, I would not recommend that. So we'll let this set up, uh, sit here for about five minutes, let that evaporate, miss it one more time, but just look how glass smooth it already is just from one spray. I mean, this thing had bubbles, probably millions of bubbles all over the place. So last thing we gotta do is scrape the drips. I'll just show you that. It's still too early right now. We'll have to kind of watch these, but um, it's nice to not have to sand your drips. Easy way to do that. Putty knife works really good. It kind of cuts them and shaves them off. So that's how we do the drips. But look how glass smooth this laid out. Um, even after inducing all of that air into the mix um, and simply just spraying denatured alcohol to pop those bubbles. Now keep in mind, we are in a big, huge warehouse. A lot of products, um, a lot of stuff's going on in here. We got. You know, Brian, Innovate Coatings, uh, getting all that concrete counters done back there. They did a lot of sanding and we still have this beautiful uh, finished uh, epoxy surface. So very, very cool product, super user friendly. And remember, when you guys order these kits, they come with lifetime warranties. So um, we pretty much take away all the uh, worry about if these things are gonna last, if I can actually do it, all that stuff. So we take care of you beyond that. But I'll go over, show you how to scrape these drips. Really, really simple. Again, like I said, this is really fluid still, but all you're gonna do is after it starts to set up on you, it's this simple. Run that putty knife on that bottom edge and it takes those off. And so we'll just do that periodically over the next hour, hour and a half until it stops dripping and then we don't have to sand those edges. Thank you. 